How can we start off on the right foot and support GRT families to keep their child in school? I suppose, again, it sort of comes back to what you've just said, where, you know, they do have a right to home educate. So, um, yeah, what what would you say about that? I suspect, and I think it's quite interesting here, um, that a lot of the problems may arise. And I think this is... There are a lot of issues at the moment across schools and parents at the moment because schools are squeezed and there's not enough ability, really, I think, for schools to reach out to parents. I expect when you are a community that is more used to being on the margins, that that's even more difficult. It's even more difficult to talk to staff. You might hit degrees of of lack of understanding, lack of awareness. I think if, if I was talking to teachers in this situation, I think I would say I think you have to educate yourself. Um, firstly and I know that there is tons of information online about the different sort of communities um, and what's important to them and why I think it's difficult for schools at the moment because there is a real message on attendance that's being hammered home and it's hammered home to schools through Ofsted through local authorities and all sorts of things so a lot of the control around situations to a certain extent is taken out of schools hands but I think it's very important to be explaining to parents and families why attendance matters and again I don't think that is um, a discussion that's just um, limited to the community that's here today I think it's actually a a discussion that schools are having with lots of parents Um, sort of one of the interesting things about coronavirus was the extent to which that sort of obligation that children went to school and parents thought they had to send their children to school faded across sort of all of society and I, I was reading this morning in the times that the number of children now who miss it out of school and stuff has has increased dramatically. So um, I think it's important to put that in that wider context. Even in the context of, sort of doing this work and talking to different groups, I have learned a lot about um, different, even uh, maybe families who, who come from Eastern Europe, where it's more likely that you might take a day off if you think that you would like to um do something like make a cake with your child and you think that's a better way of them spending the day. The, the, just the culture in those countries is more allows that kind of thing more possibly a bit more like it used to back in the day here but you are hitting a very rigid a country in a society where there is an attempt to try and control this in very different way and that's by sort of putting down controls from the center and then it's the schools that have to put them into into practice so I think it's being aware of that sort of clash Um, and the other thing I think that I would say is I think it's quite important when you are a teacher, head teacher or governor, whatever role you have, role you have, is that you try and envisage that not everybody you speak to is perhaps particularly confident or happy in the school environment. Again, this has come a lot across with a lot of the work I've done with, with people from all sorts of different communities. You know, if you um, didn't like going to school, perhaps even the thought of coming in and having to have a meeting with the head teacher is really as a parent going to... Um, upset you and put you under a lot of pressure and it might mean that you're not at your best that when you come to sort of communicate so I think it is you know there are certain things schools have to do there are certain ways they have to behave but trying to think and talk to people about the best ways to manage those situations is is definitely sensible you know some people do prefer things like meeting online rather than actually having to go into a school um, some people might prefer more informal chats it's I suppose it's about treating all the children and families that you deal with as individuals and trying to have as much understanding as possible um, of of the culture and where they come from. And I think it's um, it's something where teachers have to be very careful and schools have to be very careful. that They're not caught up by a lot of the sort of more negative stereotypes around um, and they remember that everyone they're dealing with, you know, as I said, is an individual and they need to see that in that context and and make that relationship work in that context. I do have increasing concerns about the fact that I think as a society we've moved to a place where we can write everything down to say that this is an inclusive school, this is an inclusive workplace, you know, um, and these are all the policies we have in place. But I think it's important for parents and staff and people to live up to those policies. It's no good just having it on a website. Everybody's got to try and do their best to live within that you know everybody has a different responsibility for that but it's making sure that policies around things like racism and behavior and things they're not just sort of whatever the equivalent of a dusty tome on a shelf would be on the modern world of of, of of websites but they are things that everybody is taking responsibility for their part in and that's schools as well as families there's no point in having a policy on racism if you don't actually put it into practice in the day-to-day existence of the schools you know and i think one of the interesting Very things nice. i see 
in some of the things is it's like everybody knows the behavior is wrong but they're not always as willing to tackle it or even admit there's a problem and that's something where where schools can do as much learning as, as everyone else